Some of my subscribers have been asking me about the different shots you'd play in a game of bowls. What a good question. So we're going to do that now. Hi everybody and welcome back to my Lawn Bowls for Fun channel. Alec here. What a good question, wasn't it? So I'll try and cover that now. It's fair to say that um, in a game of bowls, probably 95% of the time, you're playing a draw shot. And I'm sure a lot of you know what I mean by that, but just in case you don't, that's when you select the line and send the bowl down at the correct weight or speed that will enable the bowl to stop on or as near as possible to that jack. So that's the draw shot. Now I've covered uh, in a lot more detail how to find that line and about the weight on uh, Lawn Bowls for Fun 19 and the first video I did, number one. I'll, I'll leave the links below anyway, but check those if you want more details about how to find the line. Sometimes though, you won't be asked to draw to uh, the jack. Let me give you a couple of examples. Now here's a situation Let's just say you've got the yellow and orange bowls on your team and the opposition have the blue bowls, which are all back there. And your skip has asked you not to draw to the, to the head because you're already holding five shots, but we've got nothing at the back. So the obvious shot would be to bring a bowl back here to cover the back, to give you a bit of insurance. Doesn't matter where you are in the back here, as long as you've got in this vicinity, so that if the jack is moved, hopefully they won't get four or five shots out of it. The other option would be to drop a bowl short here, put a blocker in. Although that's a harder shot to do because not only have you got to get the weight perfectly right to drop, say, a couple of metres in front of the, the, the jack, the target jack, but you've got to get it absolutely lined up so that it does block the line of play. So that's a harder shot to do, but it is an option. If you've already got one back here, for example, then maybe that would be the next shot to try. But if you haven't got one here, the easiest shot would be to draw one somewhere in this area. Don't go in the ditch, obviously, ideally somewhere about here, which would mean if the jack is moved, the chances are you'll still have shot or at least cut down the shots. So a draw isn't always um, to the jack. Nine times out of 10 it is, but sometimes you have to play a positional bowl. And that was a good example of two shots you could play, a blocker, or put a bit of cover behind. So what's the next sort of shot you would be asked to do? Here's another scenario. We're the blue team this time. We've gone into the last end of a game and we're two shots down on that last end, but we're also another five shots down at the moment. And this is our last bowl we got to play. Now drawing onto the jack would do no good at all because we're still going to lose the game by one shot. But you can see behind we've got five or even six blue bowls waiting for that jack to be moved. But if we put too much weight, we don't want to put too much weight on the bowl because they've got two right at the back near the ditch. So we need to send that bowl down at a speed that's just going to be a yard past where the jack is to pick up that jack and take it to our blue bowls. Let me see if I can do that. There you go. What about that then? So the pace of the bowl was just a yard on. In fact, it was probably slightly more than that, probably four feet. But it's come in, it's moved the jack, and now we have five, certainly, possibly six shots. So you can see why that yard on shot was the only shot available to you. Often when a skip asks for a yard on shot, the player down the other end puts three, four, five yards on. You don't want that. In that instance, it would have been no good. If the jack had gone further on back, you still would have dropped two anyway. You had to do a yard on and no more than that and it worked out really, really well for me. So that's the yard on shot. 
Right, the next two shots are in many ways very similar and that's controlled weight and firing where you're putting a lot of weight on the bowl and here's a scenario where we're four down to the yellow bowls here we've got all the backwards but the draw is blocked either hand all right we have got a blue one over here but fr quite frankly that's not a shot the, the draw isn't really possible so this is where control weight or a firing shot would be handy. Let me just demonstrate what happens with control weight. Right, what do you think of that then? Control weight is where you must reach the head with two or three yards of weight on, maybe even more than that, but it doesn't need um, to be blasted. You could have hit that with a lot more power and the bowls would have scattered. But in this instance, by hitting two bowls, it stuns your bowl, the blue bowl, and it ended up being shot. So control weight is often where you do want the bowl to stop when it hits the target bowls it's aiming for. If you put a full fire shot on, it's going to go right the way through, which would have been fine anyway. But uh, for example, if the opposition had a couple at the back as well, there'd be more reason why you wouldn't want to do a firing shot because the jack's likely to come back into the ditch. But by doing control weight, you hope to stun your bowl and it will stop on the jack, which is exactly what happened with my shot there. It was a brilliant shot, <laughs> if I say so myself. Well, I might have cheated. <laughs> now I'm going to do some firing shots. Now I don't often fire indoors. First of all, I'm not very good. <laughs> I'm better at control weight. And also indoors or on a far surface, you don't really need to fire. A uh, control weight will do the job. However, some people do prefer to fire. They're more accurate. And sometimes there's a situation where firing is going to get the result better than control weight. Here's a, a setup where we've got a four bowls on the jack. They're blocking the jack anyway. We might get away with control weight. It might stun, but there's a lot of bowls there. If you hit one of them, the other three are still going to possibly be in the count, unless your bowl stuns perfectly onto the jack. But if you hit one of these two here, the chances are the jack is going to move back to where all your bowls are. So let's try that. So you saw what happened there. We hit the target. The jack has gone into the ditch and we're still holding three shots with the blue, the blue bowls. If the yellow one rolled much further, it would have been shot, but it didn't. So we managed to succeed in hitting that target. Now the next one is going to be as fast as I can fire. Uh, there are people that in fact can fire much faster than I can. They really send that bowl down at a great speed. I'll try and put as much power on it as I can and we're going to see what's going to happen uh, to the head. So here's a situation where, to be honest, um, controlled weight isn't going to do the damage because you can see that the jack is wedged behind um, one of their bowls and if it is hit, it's just going to go onto the bowl that's just behind it. We're six shots down. We've got a couple of bowls in good positions either side and one at the back the best back but really it's just this time it's just damage limitation we're six shots down it's not drawable so I think the best shot here will be to send as much power as you can a firing shot into that head to spread the balls out to at least uh, reduce the score against you which at the moment as I say is six so let me just see if I can do that So you can see I've reduced the score. In fact, looking at this, I've reduced it to two now. I'm just two shots down. My blue bowl is nearer than the other bowl. 
So although I didn't actually clear the head completely and spread all the balls out, I managed to save four shots with that firing shot. I'm going to try it again with another just to see if I can get a better result. So here's the, here's the shot again. A, a jack really hemmed in there, surrounded by six balls. Unlikely we're going to get shot out of this. It'd be great if we can, but what we're trying to do is reduce the deficit from six down to one or two, hopefully. Here we go. Let's give this a try. Well, that worked out okay. The bowl in the ditch is not a toucher, so remove that and we've got two shots. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that result. We didn't split the bowls as wider as I expect I would do, but even so, we got a bit of luck. We got in, we hit the target and the jack went back. I didn't think it would go back. I thought it would actually stay in the head, but it did. And um, we had one back there. Our other bowl stayed on the green as well, which was handy. So two shots, good result. So I hope you can see that when you're faced with a situation like this, where you've got quite a big target, it's a couple of feet wide, you've got a few bowls behind and either side, as long as you're confident about hitting that target with a bit of power, uh, a yard on shot wouldn't do the trick because the jack is trapped in between all those bowls and even control weight probably won't do it. What you need is a bit of power to split those bowls. Sometimes you do split them all, all over the green, other times you don't. Uh, in fact, you know, you just saw a few cases where we only dropped two shots in the end. The other one, I managed to, to get two shots out of it. So that was very, very good. Now, depending on the sort of shot that you're playing, of course, you're, you're aiming on a different point on the green. Now, you know that I don't aim down the end of the green. My focal point is within two or three meters of, of, of the front of the mat. And you can see on this photograph, the different lines that I'm taking. The, the, the furthest one out is, is the, the line I'd take for a draw shot. Then with controlled weight, I'm, it's almost half really. You have to practice this, but it's almost half the line you would normally take as if you were drawing. And then obviously if you're going to fire, it's very much near the center of the line. In fact, it, depending on how much power you, you send the ball down with, um, some people may find almost got a fire on, on that line, but it, it normally is slightly offline that you would have to use if you're going to fire. So you see you've got three different lines that you would take depending on the sort of shot you're going to do. Do practice it though. It's not something that you'll, you'll know automatically. You have to get on the green and try it yourself. And then you'll soon get to know, hopefully, roughly the line you've got to take depending on the sort of shot and how much weight you're putting behind that shot to get the correct line. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found that useful. As I've mentioned, 95% of the time you'll be using the draw shot, whether it be to the jack, whether it be as a blocker or whether it be to put a bit of insurance behind the jack. They're all still draws. Then you've got the yard on shot where you're just trying to move the jack through a yard um, as you just saw when I demonstrated it, because you've got a load of holes there waiting for it. Or you, the skip might just want you to put one there anyway as a bit of insurance. If you've already got one at the back, you might want one a little bit nearer to the jack, but a yard through. Then you've got the control weight where you're stunning your bowl to stop on the jack. And the final one is a full fire shot where you're going to splay those bowls all over the green in the hope that uh, you, you cut down. If you're five or six shots down, if you've got bowls spread out on the green as well, the chances are you might still have shot. You might just drop one or two, as long as you, you're just trying to reduce the, the deficit. But if you do that incidentally indoors, you are supposed to let the rinks either side of you know you're going to fire because um, the bowls, when they do splay out all over the green, they could go into their head and move a bowl or jack and you don't want that to happen. So you do have to warn them you're going to be firing. And I believe that is the rule in most indoor bowling clubs in the UK. If you're going to fire, you must, you must let the, the green, the rinks either side of you know that you're going to be doing that. Right, so that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed that. Enjoy your bowls and I'll see you again soon.